Are you looking to play Death Knight in Wrath of the Lich King? Then you've come to the right place. In this video, we're going to cover the best race, talents, gear, glyphs, professions, and of course, macros for PvP in Season 5. And just so you know, this guide just gets you started. If you truly want to get a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Wrath, then you need to check out our premium courses over at Skillcapped after this video. With specialized guides at your fingertips from rank 1 players, we teach you how to master your class by showing you how to top damage, master your CC, and teaching you how to become a live lord. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure everything out themselves, you can jumpstart the process with Skillcapped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so in fact that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. Join us today, link in the description below. Anyway, let's get into the guide, starting off with the best race on both the Horde and Alliance. We recommend Human for Alliance and Orc for Horde. Human Racial and Wrath functions as a PvP trinket, which means you're able to use two PvE DPS trinkets. PvE trinkets in Wrath are very iconic and overtuned, so being able to use two of them at once is pretty insane. However, if you're playing Horde, Orc is the best due to the increased pet damage as well as the stun reduction. The latter scales and synergizes with the talent on a pale horse, as well as the stun reduction meta gem, which means you pretty much never have to use your IBF for anything but the damage reduction. Now it's time to fill out your talent tree, so let's go over the best build for PvP. What you see on screen is the best talent setup, however if you're an orc then we recommend you take one point out of Epidemic and Wandering Plague since crit is low in season 5 and put them into On a Pale Horse instead. Like we discussed earlier, orc racial synergizes greatly with this talent for massive stun reduction. Now for the most noteworthy talents, you definitely want to make sure you pick up Morbidity and Ravenous Dead since these talents have a glyph counterpart that synergizes perfectly. It's also important to note that without Ravenous Dead, your pet will die way too easily. Corpse Explosion is also very unique in that it has a unique interaction with your ghoul. Rather than scaling off attack power, it instead scales off of the ghoul's HP, making it hit much, much harder. And instead of being an instant explosion, it causes your ghoul to slowly detonate. It's commonly used for when bursting, since it does much more damage than Death Coil. However, you have to combo it with a stun since your opponent can otherwise just walk out of range or CC it. Unholy Blight is a very interesting talent that basically prevents diseases from being dispelled. To optimize AoE damage, it's common for DKs to use Death Coil on everyone in the arena. Desecration is one of the most iconic Unholy DK abilities in the classic iteration of the game due to its high uptime of 20 seconds, as well as progging on every single Scourge and Plague Strike, it becomes literally impossible to kite a DK around a pillar since the entire pillar will consistently be covered in Desecration. Bone Shield is an overlooked talent that some players may find clunky to use. Essentially, it functions as a mini IBF, and due to the damage buff it gives you, it can be used both offensively and defensively. By combining it with Frost Presence, you can preemptively have these effects active before a setup and survive without having to commit any major CDs. It's very, very underrated and is something you need to master. However, one of the absolute best talents is Ebon Plaguebringer. It causes DKs to synergize greatly with casters, and is the reason that DK Ellie Shaman is so strong. And the final ability in the Unholy Tree we're going to touch on is Summon Gargoyle. This ability is your largest damage cooldown. Since it snapshots your stats when used, you ideally only want to use it when you have a lot of procs, such as Dark Moon Card Greatness, Unholy Strength, and Icy Talons. Now in the Frost Tree, we have Lichborn. This spell is very interesting in that there's a lot of implications of turning into an undead that the tooltip doesn't specify. Firstly, you'll be able to use Death Coil on yourself, making it a pretty big defensive cooldown. And secondly, you'll be immune to saps and polymorphs since these abilities can't be used on an undead. There are tons of glyphs to choose from, making it a bit overwhelming, so let's just dive in and address which glyphs are best for PvP. Starting off with your major glyphs, we have Glyph of Dark Death. This glyph synergizes perfectly with the talent Morbidity since they do the exact same thing. We care a lot about the damage of our death coils since stacking runic power and spamming coils is your main form of burst. For your second major glyph, you'll need to pick up Glyph of the Ghoul. Again, this glyph synergizes perfectly with one of your talents, namely Ravenous Dead. Without the synergy between these two, your ghoul will be incredibly squishy and die to dots. It's also important to note that Corpse Explosion scales off the HP of the ghoul, and since the HP is increased drastically from the synergy, the damage of Corpse Explosion is increased indirectly as well. And finally, for your third major glyph, you'll want to get the glyph of Anti-Magic Shell. Since Shell makes you immune to magic CC during its duration, this simply gives you more uptime in Arena. 
Now for your minor glyphs, you have to pick up Death's Embrace. It makes it much less punishing to use Death Coils on your pet to heal it. On top of that, it makes Lichborn allow you to heal yourself with Death Coils for way, way more. The last two, Glyph of Pestilence and Glyph of Raised Dead, are not as important and just for convenience. If you don't have the gold to get them for whatever reason, don't worry about it. It won't affect your PvP performance at all, so prioritize getting the other glyphs we mentioned. Next up, we're going to cover gear, but before we do, if you want to see the rest of our DK series, it is available only at skillcap.com. There, you can access our premium damage and playstyle courses, which were designed by expert Wrath of the Lich King players. If that wasn't enough, we even offer site-exclusive arena commentaries where you can get detailed matchup strategies to start playing just like a pro, and with a rating game guarantee, you have nothing to lose. So, check out skillcap.com today. Arguably the most important part about setting up your character is knowing what stats, gems, and gear you should go for come launch. This starts by understanding stat priority, where you'll want to get 130 spell penetration, followed by 5% hit and then prioritize strength over attack power, over rezzle, over crit, over haste. The reason why we want 130 spell penetration is to counter the shadow resistance offered by both paladins and priests. Without 130 spell pen, there is a chance some of your abilities will get resisted. Finally, in terms of normal offensive stats, we prioritize strength over attack power due to how many passive modifiers we have that modify strength. For your gems, we recommend going for strength in reds, brazil in yellow, and spell penetration in blues. However, if needed, don't be shy to use hit rating gems if you're struggling to hit the 5% hit cap. And for the meta gem, you want to be running either the Persistent Earth Siege Diamond as Orc or Chaotic Sky Flare Diamond as Human. And now onto the gears lists, starting off with the pre-biz set. What you see on screen is all the things that can be acquired before the arena season starts. Everything is either BOEs that you can buy from the auction house, dungeon gear from normal and heroics, or just honor gear that is easily grindable. Ring of the Kirin Tour can simply be purchased for 6,800 to 8,500 gold, depending on your reputation with the Kirin Tour faction, which may sound like a lot, but due to how expensive everything is on launch, you should be able to farm the gold pretty quickly. Now, although Death and Nerd Sabatons require Exalted with Knights of the Ebon Blade, it's really not that big of a deal. This is because DKs start out as friendly, making this reputation incredibly easy to get Exalted with. And now as an orc, you obviously won't have access to Will to Survive, so you'll have to replace the Anvil of Titans with Medallion of the Horde. For the actual Biss set, you're going to be looking at getting the majority of your gear from PvP. This makes DKs incredibly easy to gear in Season 5, unlike other classes who rely heavily on PvE pieces. There are, however, a few pieces that you'll want from PvE. Most of them are not too hard to come by, however, Betrayer of Humanity definitely is, so while you're struggling to get your hands on it, look to get either the Jawbone or a Deadly Two-Hander, depending on your race. Humans prefer swords, orcs prefer axes due to passive racial bonuses. And again, if you're an orc, replace Anvil with the Medallion of the Horde. Professions in Wrath of the Lich King play a huge part in your character's power level. Even though they might be expensive to level, we recommend you get your hands on Jewel Crafting and Engineering. Jewel Crafting gives you the highest stat boost compared to the other options in Season 5, which comes in the form of Amplified Gems that you can only have three of. This is huge, since normal Epic Gems aren't available until Season 7, making the stat difference between the normal gems and the Jewel Crafting exclusives that much bigger. Engineering is the more important one of the two, however. This is because of the hand-mounted Pyro Rocket Glove Enchant, which acts as a damage boost that's off the GCD. This is especially good in Season 5 due to the fact that it doesn't scale off anything. The damage is static, so it's obviously going to be the strongest in the arena season where players' HP pools are the lowest. Unholy DKs are definitely one of the more macro-heavy classes in the game. This is mainly due to pet management and tons of utility, so let's dive in. A pet attack macro is also super useful for choosing who your pet should be hitting. However, adding an at-target condition makes it so that you won't automatically change your pet's target when someone shadow mounts. This is really important because it can otherwise cause your pet to break CC. Sometimes your pet will take heavy damage and you'll need to use death coil to heal it. In that situation, having a macro that automatically targets your pet with death coils means that you won't need to physically target your pet to heal it. This one is mandatory for sure. To do your maximum burst possible, you'll want to incorporate corpse explosion into your rotation. However, to do this with your pet, you'll need to target it. So just like the previous macro, we add an at pet condition so it automatically casts the ability onto the pet. 
Now, for your own character, we recommend you get your hands on a Lichborn Death Coil macro. This macro does exactly that cast the Lichborn and Death Coil onto yourself. This is one of your best defensives, and without this, you'll have to physically target yourself to Death Coil. Not ideal. Seeing a Strangulate requires one blood rune, having a macro that uses Blood Tap and Strangulate at the same time is useful. This ensures that you'll be able to use Strang on demand. And now for the more simple macros, you'll want to get your hands on Arena 123 and Focus Chains of Ice macros. These are four separate macros that allow you to cast Chains of Ice on anyone in the arena without the need to target them. The exact same thing should be done for Mind Freeze. By having access to Arena 123 and Focus Mind Freeze, you'll be able to interrupt anyone seamlessly. So, to recap, DKs will definitely shine in Season 5. This is due to the fact that they don't scale off armor penetration, which gets out of control in the later seasons. Additionally, the PvE trinkets in the later seasons don't have strength on them, which is what DKs want as much of as possible due to the various strength stat amplifiers. That means that the early seasons of Wrath is where you'll find the most success, and first step towards that is setting up your character correctly. Human is Biss for Alliance, Orc is best for Horde, the majority of your gear comes from PvP, however, some key pieces in PvE are very strong, luckily they're pretty easy to come by, although Betrayer of Humanity is an exception. Look to find a replacement if you get unlucky with drops and rolls. For gems, get Razil in yellows, Strength in reds, and Spell Pen in blues. The best professions are Jewel Crafting and Engineering, due to the Rocket Glove Enchant as well as the Jewel Craft exclusive gems. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Let us know your plans for Wrath of the Lich King. Will you be playing DK? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you'll climb at least 400 plus rating when actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.